Number eight, Giordano Bruno, the infinite dreamer. In 1584, everyone knew the earth was the center of everything. Then came Giordano Bruno. He didn't just agree with Copernicus that the earth moved around the sun. He went further. He claimed the stars were distant suns with their own planets, and some of those planets might even have life. The universe was infinite with countless worlds. To the church, this wasn't just wrong. It was religious rebellion. They spent seven years trying to break him in a Roman prison. He refused to take it back. In 1600, they dragged him to a public square, tied him to a wooden post, and burned him alive. Today, the Kepler Space Telescope has confirmed over 5,000 exoplanets around other stars, exactly like he described. He wasn't a rebel. He was just looking at a bigger picture than everyone else was ready to see. Number seven, Alice Stewart, the crusader against x-rays in pregnancy. In the 1950s, doctors thought X-raying pregnant women was a great idea. It was modern, scientific, and safe. But Alice Stewart, a British researcher and physician, noticed a terrifying pattern. Children whose mothers got X-rays during pregnancy were twice as likely to get cancer. When she published her findings in 1956, the medical world didn't thank her. They tried to bury her. For 25 years, they called her research and data flawed because admitting she was right meant admitting they'd accidentally hurt thousands of children. X-ray doctors had entire careers built on scanning pregnant women. It took until the 1980s for the practice to fully stop. Stewart was proven right, but only after being professionally attacked for decades she saved countless lives by being the annoying person who refused to stop asking why kids were getting sick. Number six, Aristarchus of Samos, 1,800 years too early. Most people think Copernicus invented the idea that Earth orbits the sun, but it was actually Aristarchus who figured it out in 270 BC. Using simple math and watching moon eclipses, he calculated that the sun was way bigger than Earth. So he came to the logical conclusion that it makes more sense that small thing orbits the big thing, not the other way around. But his peers thought he was insane. If Earth moved, wouldn't we feel constant wind? Wouldn't birds get left behind in the sky? One famous philosopher even said, Aristarchus should be arrested for disrespecting the gods by moving the sacred center of everything. His ideas were so wild they were ignored for nearly 2,000 years. He died forgotten, a man who solved how the solar system works 1,800 years before anyone was ready to listen. Number five, Barbara McClintock, the mother of jumping genes. In the 1940s, scientists believed DNA was a static, unchangeable blueprint. Then came Barbara McClintock. While studying corn at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, she discovered that genes could actually jump around on chromosomes, changing how organisms develop. The scientific community rolled their eyes. One colleague even called her crazy to her face. She presented at conferences to rooms of men who read newspapers while she spoke. She was so frustrated by the ridicule that she stopped publishing her data in 1953, but she didn't stop working. 30 years later, the world finally caught up. Transposable elements became fundamental to genetics and medicine. In 1983, at age 81, she won the Nobel Prize. She didn't change her mind. The world just finally grew a brain. Number four, William Harvey, the blood pump discovery. For 1,500 years, everyone believed the great Galen, the ancient Roman physician who claimed the liver continuously created new blood that the body consumed like fuel. In 1628, William Harvey proposed a crazy new theory. The heart is a pump and blood circulates in a closed loop. He'd done the math. 
the heart pumps way too much blood for the body to be constantly consuming it. Doctors were outraged. They called him circulator, a 17th century insult meaning quack. His medical practice collapsed because patients were terrified of a doctor with such bizarre ideas. Colleagues published pamphlets attacking him. Harvey lived to see his theory accepted, but only because he outlived the old guard who were too stubborn and refused to look at the evidence. Number three, Nikola Tesla, the man from the future. Tesla talked about worldwide wireless systems and pocket-sized devices that could send pictures across the planet in the 1890s when most homes didn't even have light bulbs. His investors thought he'd lost his mind, especially when he tried to build the Wardenclyffe Tower to give free wireless electricity to the entire world. JP Morgan pulled his funding when he realized free meant no profit. So Tesla died poor in 1943, spending his final years in a New York hotel room, feeding pigeons and writing letters about space energy. Today, your Wi-Fi, your smartphone, your electrical outlets, and the wireless signals flying through your walls are all Tesla's ideas. An undeniable proof that he wasn't crazy. He was just a time traveler born 100 years too early. Number two. Subrahmanyan Chandrasekhar, the black hole outcast. At age 19, on a boat ride from India to England, a young scientist named Chandra calculated that when massive stars die, they don't just fade away, they collapse into points so dense that even light can escape. We call them black holes. When he presented this in 1935, Arthur Eddington, the most famous astronomer of the time, publicly mocked him in front of everyone, calling it stellar buffoonery. The humiliation was so bad, Chandra left England for America. It took 50 years for observations to prove he was right. In 1983, he finally won the Nobel Prize at age 73. Imagine being the teenager who figured out one of space's biggest mysteries, only to have the, these so-called experts laugh at you for half a century. Number one. George Zweig, the father of the quark model. In 1964, physicist George Zweig said that protons and neutrons weren't the smallest particles. They were made of even tinier things he called aces, which is now known as quarks. His colleagues at the world's top physics lab thought he'd gone mad. When he tried to publish, they rejected his paper. When he came back to Caltech, they blocked him from getting a teaching job because his theory was too embarrassing. One senior scientist called him a con artist. Meanwhile, Murray Gell-Mann suggested the same idea using fancier math and won the Nobel Prize. Zweig was pushed aside while others got the fame and credit for his discovery. It turns out his crazy math was the literal foundation of modern particle physics. Every atom, every particle lab, every quantum computer are all built on the theory that got him called a fool. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to see more.